Hey everyone, Chris Kelly here with ProductionCrate.com. Today, we're going to be talking about cinemagraphs. They're an awesome medium to bring your images to life for things like advertising, movie posters, or just to make some awesome content for your page. This is a team tutorial, so Adrian and I will both be showing off some rad techniques. All right, so first things first, we're gonna- Actually, dude, I was pretty ready to go. Do you mind if I go first? Oh, sure, okay. You sure? You don't really sound sure. No, 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 it's fine. Cool, thanks. This clip wasn't specifically shot for a cinemagraph, which would have been helpful, but we can still make it work. Having your camera locked down on something like a tripod is always gonna be helpful if you're making a cinemagraph. Cinemagraphs always look best when you can loop some kind of movement, so that's what we're going to be looking for here. This time, I think I want to start the loop from the ignition moment when she opens her hand. I'm going to be using the B and N hotkeys to trim my workspace until I find a loop that looks pretty clean. I'm just looking at her hand and her sleeve since I'm going to be freeze framing the rest. That looks pretty smooth, so now I can trim the in and out points of this layer. Next, let's create the freeze frame. I want to find a frame where most of her hand is out of the shot since we don't want to be able to see the hand or the sleeve frozen at any point. I may have to stitch together a few frames to get that, but it should be pretty easy. I'm going to stitch together a little bit more. I'm going to create a duplicate of this video layer, drop the opacity so I can see where I need to add the clean plate. I'm going to extend both of these freeze frame clips to the end of the comp and now let's pre-compose them together to keep everything nice and clean. Next, let's isolate the fingers. We can do this with some quick masking because the background is not moving at all. We'll have to do some tighter rotoscoping for the sleeve portion because that passes over the rest of the robe, which has a bit more movement. Alright, that works pretty well. I'm going to create a duplicate of the layer and delete the mask, and let's try the roto brush on this. I already have the fingers isolated, so I don't need to be too clean about those, but I want the sleeve roto to be pretty tight. I'm going to speed up through this process. If you don't know how to use the roto brush, there are tons of tutorials out there. Just check those out. Alright, so now that the roto is finished, I want to add some glowy flicker on her face, something that the fireball would be causing. I will duplicate the clean plate and add a shift channels effect to it. I will set the red and blue channels to full off, but leave the green on. Let's just make a fast mask around her face and change the blending mode to screen. I'm going to drop the opacity a bit and let's add a wiggle expression to the opacity. Let's pre-compose everything. Since Roto Brush makes playback absolutely miserable, I'm just going to export this all together. Alright, let's import the video that we just exported with our Roto and Freeze framework all done so we can see what we're working with. I'm going to import the Sorcery Fire 1 loopable effect, which is actually a free effect so anybody can download it. I want the fireball to start right when she opens her hand. This effect is loopable. Right now it is too short for the clip, so let's right click on it in the project window, go to interpret footage, find where it says loop, and type in how many times you want it to loop. Any high number will work, let's do 12. Alright, now I will extend the out point so it takes up the entire comp. Next, I'm going to keyframe the position of the fireball so it stays over her hand as it moves. Alright, so when she closes her hand, I want to scale the fireball down, let's say from 100% to 20%. I'm also going to fade the opacity from 100% to 0. Nice, that looks pretty cool. I'm just going to change the color from blue to green with the tritone effect. Let's change all three colors to different greens. Cool, the fireball looks pretty good. Now let's add some glow. I'm going to just duplicate the fireball layer and add a fast box blur to it. And let's increase that blur and let's change the blending mode of this to add. And now we have a nice glow. Not bad, the loop is looking pretty good. For the previous version, I had to use a few other techniques, so here are some bonus tips. For this one, I didn't have the fireball fading in and out at any point, it was looping the entire time. Right now, the seam of where the loop starts is pretty obvious to me, since both the video and the visual effect loop at the same point. 
We can actually avoid this by duplicating our fire effect and dragging it over so that it loops twice and then selecting both of those layers and just offsetting them a bit. That way the visual effect starts looping at a different frame than the video loop. Cool, that's it for me. Let's see what Adrian's working on. I am working on a number of things over here, Chris. If you consider two to be a number, which I do because I learned counting early on, I'm gonna make two different cinemagraphs using the same piece of footage, and this is what that footage looks like. This first example is going to be the easier of the two. Basically, we just need to freeze these people in the background, which will be pretty easy, because they're already kind of not moving, and even if they were, it would still be pretty easy. And we need to make this fire looping. Now, I've already made a tutorial on making fire loopable, so you can go ahead and check that out in the card if you want to. What I'm gonna do is just pick a kind of arbitrary place to be my looping point, and I'm going to split my footage with control Control shift D so that'll duplicate it but it also cuts it right there wherever your playhead is and I am going to move to the beginning and my top layer I'll move to the beginning of the timeline and my other layer I'll move to the end because the part where I cut it is going to become our new looping point what you might be tempted to do is just kind of fade out that top layer the thing is fades tend to draw attention to themselves it's kind of really obvious that we just faded it out there what we are going to do instead we're going to use a linear wipe transition we need to change the wipe angle to zero I believe and we can just move the transition up and down to verify that it's going in the direction we want which it is so let's just set it at zero and move forward a couple of frames and set it to 100 and then just kind of go through the frames and verify that this transition is sort of moving at the same speed that the fire is going up and if that looks good just go ahead and feather it out and turn your other layer back on and you can see what we've done which right now is still drawing a lot of attention to itself but it's looking better than just the normal Fate. And now I will duplicate my footage, make a freeze frame, and then mask out the fire or whatever it is you want to keep moving. And as you can see, it's still not perfect, but it's starting to look a lot better. So we can bring in our mask a little bit where we see issues. Right now I can see these little flames on the side pop in where they weren't there before. So if I just bring in my mask, I can cut those out like they were never even there. But that's a little bit of a double-edged sword because now I brought in this flame that is frozen in time and that shouldn't be there because we want the flame to be moving. So we'll kind to find a happy medium with that and then the last thing that i would like to do to kind of help disguise the transition here is just to go over to footage crate let's do a search for fire there's that looping fire tutorial i was talking about and if we just click browse more fire and sparks we can find the ones that loop here they are so just grab any of them number one is free so if you're not a pro user just use that one i'll go ahead and pick number three because i can i'll bring that into my composition i'll right click on it and click interpret main and i'll just change the loop time to to something bigger so it actually will loop and I'll bring that into my composition and I'm gonna go ahead and change this into a screen and transfer mode and I'm going to take a mask and cut off the bottom part with the reflection and all that because I'm not gonna need that for what I'm doing here these assets already loop pretty seamlessly so that's why we're using them to disguise the other loop that we made in this composition so I'll just bring that into position and I'll add a camera lens blur to it because this fire that we're trying to blend it with is out of focus so we're gonna have a moving part overlapping a frozen part which is going to add a little bit to our realism to make it match this other fire i want to add a little bit of red to it but as you can see if i bring the curves over here and i try and add some red to it with the curves it doesn't really do anything and that's just because this is on transparent background if i add a solid composite effect below the curves and i change it to black you'll see now the background of it is black and now the curves will work so let's go ahead and change that back to screen now those colors look like they match a little bit better and as you can see with those additional flames there to kind of help hide our problems this looks a lot better one final thing that I would like to do is add a new adjustment layer over everything and put a glow effect on it which will overlap some of these other parts that are frozen so again having a little bit more of that overlap is going to make this whole thing look a lot better my second cinemagraph is going to be a little bit more similar to what Chris did but with a bit of a twist in his, he scrolled through and found a looping point, but in mine, there is no good looping point for the motion I wish to isolate, which is this lady taking a refreshing sip of her hot beverage. It looks like there might be if you chop off the beginning and move it to line up with the end here, but upon further inspection, there actually is a pretty noticeable jump if you do it that way. So I'm going to go about it a little bit differently. 
differently. I've got my footage trimmed down so it's only the move I'm trying to isolate and I'm going to find the point where her glass is at the apex of its movement and I'll split the clip right there and duplicate the second half of it. And on that duplicate, I'm going to reverse the time and move it backwards so it will loop. And the reason I'm reversing the end of the clip instead of the beginning is because I feel like it's a little bit less expected and therefore it's not gonna be as obviously the same move only in reverse. But it is still a little bit obvious, so I'm going to use the time remapping to make this new reverse clip I've made match the timing of her original move a little bit better. And I'm going to hit F9 on the last keyframe frame to ease it in a bit to make it look more natural. And that is how we made our cinemagraphs. If you decide to make any of your own, we would love to see them. Our social media links are in the description below. Did you know that I am part of Production Create's notification squad? If you were too, then we would be part of the same squad. Now tell me that's not a dream come true. All you have to do is ring the bell. It's that easy. But even if you don't, we still think you're awesome and hope you continue to make it awesome in the future. Bye now.